Jacob Truba, number eight, New York Rangers. Elliot, it's not very often that you meet a bruising defenseman slash checks notes painter. But ladies and gentlemen, Jacob Truba of the New York Rangers. Do you think you're going to get tired of talking about this? No, I love it. Like it's a, it's a good hobby. Mm -hmm. I think uh, I spent a, maybe a little too much time painting this summer. But uh, yeah, I mean, I enjoy it. How did you pick this up? Um, my wife works a lot. So my responsibility is the dogs. Yep. And I'm not really good at just sitting around. Um, golf isn't always the easiest hobby in New York. Living yep. in the city, sometimes it's a five, six hour thing outside the city to get, get out there and come back and wanted to kind of find a hobby that I could do a little closer. So I'd come home from the rink. Uh, a friend of mine has a studio in Brooklyn and he's an yeah. artist. Uh, I pick up the dogs, we walk over the bridge and uh, we paint. I think that's fantastic. I agree. Do, do you do you have, like, I don't want to make it too strained, like, oh, you must have had a favorite defenseman growing up. Who's your favorite artist? But do you have someone that you look at, like as far as as far as art goes, as far as painting goes, um, something you look at and you say, "Yeah, I really dig this." So how this the project kind of got evolved was East Klein. Uh, he painted with another woman's body, but he he kind of made marks with her body. Yeah, um, he's a pretty famous artist. Um, hmm. So he's got that was where I kind of got the idea of mark making with a body, mm -hmm. hmm. and I kind of thought about that for a while and was like, that kind of makes sense with me and what I do and a lot of painting is identity and marks that you leave yep. I think that uh, all kind of ties into my thought process into it and trying to find the the beauty into making the marks with my body how on did a canvas you, how did you <laughs> think it was going to turn out I didn't know and that's like that's what's like did fun you have any it. idea because I'm sure like in your head you must have thought I think this is going to end up like this no I really had no no idea like so i was doing a painting and kind of got impatient with it and i was like i want something that's more immediate and i always had this kind of this idea in yeah. the back of my mind i was like let's just go for it and do it and like get the equipment from the rink and do the whole thing um and there's no each painting there was no like predetermined idea of what i wanted it's paint yourself make your mark yeah. step back and like how do i respond to the mark on the canvas with lines planes how do, I, how do i want to break that plane and separate create more space so i gotta hit it with white to kind of create more space and in a painting um if it gets a little too busy and then there's some of them have have washes so if like the wash will change the color of the canvas or if i hit it mm. hit it and then do a wash over that it kind of moves that guy to the that mark goes to the back a little bit and different colors kind of come in on different different planes and so cool you just kind of keep hitting it wow. and that's that's what's fun about it is you could be one, there's my very first one I did was just one hit and it looked great. And that was it. And like, mm -hmm. you could be one hit away or you could be 20 hits away from being done. And you just step back and look at it every time. And yeah, that, I mean, that was the enjoyable part. And then there's also the part where you have one that's like, uh, I, I kind of like it, like it's yeah. good, but like, do I want to ruin it? And then you kind of got to go through that barrier of hitting something that you like and hopefully you come across something better. So the blue one that everybody seems to like, I wanted to be done with and sat on the wall for a long time. And the, the black mark was just too solid black and needed to be broken up, I thought. So then went back and hit it with different blues and then the sticks we kind of made lines through it and kind of broke it up. I, I'm fascinated with this. I'm, <laughs> I, I, I'm gonna swing to hockey here in a second, I swear. It's good. But let, let me ask you, um, what's more important to you? That you like it or someone else likes it? Um, that I like it, I think. I mean, the, the intention was never to do anything with them, really. I mean, I'm going to hang a couple in our apartment. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's that's what's fun. There's a bit of a sense of an accomplishment of you can look at it and when you, no one says it's done until I say it's done and I obviously like it if I think it's done. If I don't like it, then I'm going to continue hitting it yeah. and continue doing different things and trying different things with it. Um, so yeah, like it's, that's part of the thing that's cool is like every single one of them that I would say is completed. It's like, I love it. And that's why it's done. It's awesome. Because you, you, you did that particular style. Did anybody ask you why you chose to do it that way? I mean, I think it's part of who I am as a hockey player. There's the hitting thing is a lot of different, different views, I think from different people. Uh, I think it kind of shows a different side of me. I kind of get the reputation of the, the mean hard leg. Like, and that's not who I really am as a person. I'm a little more 
sensitive artsy kind of guy. Um, so yeah, I think it's just kind of who I, who I am and I have the time in the summer to kind of express that. And it's a great creative outlet, I think for me to kind of get away from the, the mean, nasty, intense all the time and just kind of relax and have fun and get to, it's a different experience. You know, I bet most people really love it and embrace it and, and like it, but I'm sure at the beginning you had some people who poked fun at you or like, just cause that's what teammates and friends do. Right. So what was the most creative jab you got from somebody about your new hobby? Uh, I didn't tell anybody about it. Oh, okay. I was pretty secretive about it. Obviously my wife knew and some close friends guys knew I painted teammates knew I painted. We did mm -hmm. a, uh, our fan, <laughs> our fantasy football draft for the, uh, to determine the, draft order we did a duck race on some website mm -hmm. and so we all facetimed in and i was at the studio and i had like paint all over my face and so everybody's like <laughs> laughing at me like what are you doing like, <laughs> I'm, like i'm painting so everybody knows i painted nobody knew what i was doing or the project and before i posted them i did like a little thing with probably like 15 20 friends in new york invited some teammates who lived in the city so they all came and didn't really know what they were getting into <laughs> and so they get there and they're like well, what am i looking at and then i kind of explain it and then everybody kind of gets it and they're like oh that's pretty neat <laughs> excellent okay to the boring hockey stuff yeah now. <laughs> i play hockey <laughs> yeah uh, which, uh, hold on hold on hold on hold on, hold on. Okay. what's your like holy grail to paint like is there a, a famous painting that you would like i would like to do that or is there is there something that you're thinking that's my baby that's my project um Honestly, it was this one for the the last bit nice. to do, and I I didn't think it would the painting thing would become. I didn't think I'd be sitting here talking to you about painting. Mm -hmm. um, so I haven't really like. It's usually a summer hobby, and then it's done, and it's hockey season, and turn the page. And I kind of was when I posted them. That was kind of the end of the painting for the summer, obviously. Um, and yeah, I mean, it's, I don't really know what's next or what I want to do next. Could be there's variations of things I can do with just kind of the stick and gloves and painting the gloves and making different, like, I can make whatever a flower, a tree, whatever I want with, mm -hmm. I like the idea of the hockey aspect of it, of using my body as kind of, I'm not the best painter with a brush. I obviously don't have any like formal painting training. Mm -hmm. Um, but just learning about the, what makes a painting good, I guess, when you look at it from a artist or a, someone who appreciates art perspective. Mm -hmm. So I really, I don't have an idea of what's, what's next, but I'm sure there'll be a project next summer. <laughs> okay. Nice. So many, and I, I, the only reason I know this is my wife's an artist too, but you know, so many artists chase the child's mind, right? Yeah. That the word it's, it's, it's pure and it's not clouded by years and years of quote unquote experience and different ideas. So don't put yourself down and say like, Oh, my brush technique is yeah, bad no. because artists will tell you, I wish I could think and paint like I was four years old all over again, yeah. but my brain's so clouded that I can't. That's kind of another fun part of the painting is people have like commented on the Instagram stuff and they see everybody sees like something different, which I didn't even see. Hmm. And like my idea of what I kind of, not all of them kind of tell a story, but like the one was kind of based off the like Egyptian tombs of like they would leave their mark by like old, old, old tombs hmm. um, or caves. Like a lot of ancient people left marks of themselves in caves. Yeah. Um, and I kind of tried to emulate that and that painting is kind of supposed to be like the original mark was more of a print uh, of my jersey. And it's kind of supposed to be like me hitting back at myself, kind of destruction of self. Ranger's hmm. going to let you redo the room? <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> I think they're ready for me to move on from painting and worry about hockey. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, some new faces uh, yeah. in the Rangers room this year. Uh, and we always talk about leadership and here comes Blake Wheeler. And in his Eric Gustafson and in his Nick Bonino, et cetera. Thoughts on the additions this summer? Great. I mean, I was super excited to, to see Blake sign. Obviously, he's someone that uh, I played with. He was a captain of yep. mine. I have mm -hmm. grew up a lot under him and obviously learned a lot about leadership from him. I think uh, I've already spent a good amount of time with him this summer and mm -hmm. kind of talked about where he sees himself on this team and how he wants to, to be perceived I guess as as the player and who he is in the room and I just want him to be himself like he's he's been a great he was a great teammate to me he helped me tremendously in, in my career um obviously the other guys quick been around a long time won Stanley yeah. Cups Gustafson's experienced player very good talented offensive um a lot of skill Benino obviously is going to be a big player for us I think mm -hmm. uh, a lot of those guys just bringing in 
older veteran guys who, who have been around the block and know what it's all about and how to how to act, how to respond to certain situations on and off the ice. I think it's going to be great for our group. Gallant loved you. You know, he made you the captain. He, he loved the way you played. How is it going to be different now under a, a new head coach? Um, yeah, you always kind of not feel your way out. You, you be yourself, but it's always different. Guys, coaches coach differently. They have different uh, ideas about how to how to go about just a game day or practice and what they want to accomplish. I think being open, communicating, communication I've learned is a pretty uh, major thing in life, whether it's with a new coach or a new person, teammate, my wife, whoever it is, like you got to talk and be honest with people, I think is uh, a key. And we've had good conversations already. I think uh, we see eye to eye on a, a lot of things on what uh, w would be great for our team and things that he can implement and, and help our team uh, grow and kind of get to that next level. And I mean, we're, we have a team that can contend and win a Stanley Cup and goals to make the playoffs and move from there and make a run at it. What? How do you think you'll be different under him? Um, as a team, I meant. The as way a team? you guys play, yes. I don't know. It's tough to answer without going through training camp and seeing like exactly what he implements. I think obviously there's going to be some different systems. Um, that's true with any coach. I think uh, how I don't know how he handle certain situations or not yet. So Turk had his way of, of going about things. I'm sure Lavi's will be, be a little bit different. Um, but I mean, he's obviously been successful as a coach in this league and he's made a lot of deep playoff runs. And I think mm -hmm. uh, he commands that, uh, I mean, Turk did too, but I mean, he commands that respect of, of being a well-established coach. Uh, Keandre Miller. Uh, this was an important off season for him. Um, and you talk about, you know, uh, developing and taking next steps and, You've been right there beside him for the majority of his journey here, helping him take those next steps. How much would you, as you know, partner, captain, all of it, talk to him about what he went into in the off season? Um, yeah, I think there's there's a fine line of you're obviously friends with people and have yeah. friendships, and then there's also the business side of reality of the sport is you need contracts like that's so you don't really want to get involved into that you almost want to be there for him as a friend more than you do as a captain in those situations because those are not always easy uh easy things to go through and that's really his first time going through it yeah. um so if he has questions or wants to run things by you you be there for him as a friend uh, but yeah i mean he's obviously a great player how good can he, how good can he be his skating he's fantastic to play with he's a great partner um he's fun to play with honestly like he, he excites me some of the stuff he does out there like I'm standing next to him. I, I open my eyes a little bit bigger yeah. when he makes a play. Um, but yeah, like just his reach, his skating, like he's he's going to get better too, which is amazing to know. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, just just stay on the course. You don't have to – I we talked at length a little bit about how Foxy went from year one to year two, mm. and that's not normal. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> um, but yeah, like that knowing – it's tough. It's tough as a young player to be around and see – a guy who foxy one year and then wins the Norris and like, Oh, I want to take that jump. And that's not always how everybody goes through the path. Like it's a lot of incremental improvements um, and just staying focused on, on getting better every year and growing mm -hmm. as a player and things are going to work out for you. You know, on that van, I want to ask you about the friend here. Like he's got the, the, the burden. I don't even know if I'd call it a burden, but he's, he's the number one overall pick. And um, like, how do you help him? get to where he certainly wants to go. It hasn't been easy. So how do you see it in your role as captain to Alexi, how can I help you get there? Um, yeah, be there for him if he has questions. I think uh, we have a lot of forwards who have, Mika's a good example of a guy who in Ottawa and then kind of took off when, when he got to New York. Um, and it's not always a straight line. This like same kind of thing with Foxy and Keandre. Like, you'll have forwards who come in and McDavid, crazy like successful right away and some guys even jack jack hughes was took a huge step like it's your it takes time for people to develop and everyone's on their own trajectory and like there's nothing wrong with continuing to work hard and go about your business he has a great attitude he's a great teammate like guys love having him around the locker room um just keep developing keep going about your business and things are going to work out if you put in the work it's going to happen for you like the skills there the talents there just continue to work through it and it's gonna it's gonna go Finish this sentence. Uh, the Rangers will have a great season if blank. 
Uh, the Rangers will have a great season if we play to our potential. I think uh, everything's there for us to be successful. Um, now it's on us. It's on the players to go out there and make it happen on the ice. So yesterday we uh, we talked to Sidney Crosby, and we are talking about the nature of how hockey has a lot of gray areas in it, um, where it's open for interpretation. And... I asked him, you know, what confuses him the most or what would he like to have more clarity or understanding on? And he talked about suspensions and understanding, mm -hmm. okay, this is two games, this is four games, this is one game. He said a lot of players, I'm paraphrasing, but something along the lines of we don't know, we're sort of guessing when things happen. I want to ask you the same question. Given that there's so much up for interpretation in the game, is there something that still confuses you about hockey that you wish had more clarity around it? Um, I think, that, yeah, a little bit of the the rules at times can be like a, an offsides if your skate's in the air, but on the side of somewhere, mm -hmm. like a lot of times you don't even <laughs> know all the rules. <laughs> it's more up, you leave it up to the coaches to challenge those things. You're like, what's a kick? What's the redirection? Like, yep. There's snow coming up, but it's a redirection. Like that means you're stopping. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Is your foot on the ice or off the ice kind of thing with replay? Some of those, but that's the plays are so few and far between. Like it's just going to happen. Goal interference, I think, is obviously one everyone would like be like, I don't get how that's not. And this one is. Yep. Um, kind of same. Suspensions are similar where a play will happen. You'd be like, hey, is it one game or four games? And like you kind of talk it amongst guys and it comes out and you're like, <laughs> okay, <laughs> I guess it's that. You know, um, Anse Kopitar talked to us about penalties. And, and uh, Elliot and I talked about this yesterday. Um, I asked him, because he's sensitive about too many penalties in the game and just turning into an exchange of power mm -hmm. plays. Mm -hmm. And I said, what's the perfect amount of power? What's the perfect amount of penalties for a game? And he said five. Yeah, so one four. team gets, you'll say four? Yeah, so you, it doesn't have to be even. I, I understand. I understand that, but Elliot was making the point. I'm putting words in your mouth here. That Always a happens. lot of players. It's my job. A lot of players wish there were less penalties called. More than I thought. I actually thought the penalty players would want more penalties, but I've been told it's the reverse. They don't want penalties. Um, I honestly don't want a game where like they only call four penalties. If there's eight penalties, call the penalties. I mm -hmm. think that gets back to the gray areas like you want the penalties to be penalties consistently um if i could pick a perfect number yeah i would pick probably four like i don't it just ruins the flow of the game it gets guys out of the game if you're not yep. on the power play you're not penalty killing then it's harder to get back into it um like you're out there you've been sitting on the bench for three four minutes maybe like it's not as easy as like a flow of a game where everybody's into it and like both teams you see who's the better team mm -hmm. i'm good i'm good too good the artist is done <laughs> cool thanks jacob